Rebeck and thank you so much for staying with Morning Live on this Friday morning whereby we're discussing this issue of national importance. Uh, we've seen reports of many young women being raped, killed and some of them being burnt. There are so many cases if you open your newspapers, if you listen to radio and watch television. So that is what we're discussing this morning. Of course trying to find a way forward as to what needs to be done. Talk to us at Morning Live at ABC. It is our Twitter handle. What needs to be done going forward? I'm still joined by the Minister of Women and Children in the Presidency as well as uh, Colleen Mona, CEO of Gender Links and Javu Baloy, the spokesperson for the uh, Gender Equality Commission. We're discussing these issues. Now, Minister, you said the programs are there. I mean, they've always been there. But do you think they visible enough? Well, the programs will never be visible enough because visib visibility must go with change, must go with effect and impact on the, on the women. So for now, the mere fact of that we continue to see the scourge increasing and becoming a crisis, a national crisis for us. But also what is key, as Colleen has indicated, we've got to start working closer together. We must move away from our little territories. And collectively, we can make a difference. And I think that does not even require monies, but it requires our commitment, our efforts, but also reaching out to the women. I wanted to say, so what do we do as, as a worried um, woman staying in South Africa, not feeling safe? What, what do I need to do? How do I contribute towards finding a solution to, to, to this problem? First, we need, we need to make sure we reach out to those who are near to us. We need to make sure that our communities are able to embrace all women and make sure that women are respected in their own little spaces. And as soon as we start doing that, then it can expand that. Because the first problem, it starts with women who are not recognized within their communities. I'll make an example. Last week, Thursday, in Rondebelt, Boxbeck, a woman was killed. Neighbors were peeping through the windows as she was screaming, being pulled by these criminals out of her own house, being shot at. Before she could be shot at, neighbors were watching through the windows. It was at night. No one called the police, but watching. That's the space which we've got to close in and close ranks in making sure that the first point of call, we have Ubuntu, we can reach out. We don't ask, what has she done? We are able to be show sympathy and make sure that we reach out to those women. She's there today, a mother of two, because community, the immediate neighbors were watching, peeping through the windows. That's the first point of call. Our consciousness, our conscience must speak to us that we are people and the person where this particular activity is happening is another human being. Let me just uh, move over to Colleen, if you can just pass the microphone over to, over to her. We, we, we talked about uh, the trending hashtag, uh, men are trash. Of course, with many South African men saying we are for the hashtag and some are saying, no, we are against it. Let us not be painted with the same brush. W what do you have to say? Because some people are saying that uh, it actually starts with family values. You know, I think we need to understand the anger that is out there that has led to that hashtag. And then we need to harness that anger and turn it to action. No revolution ever started without anger, you know, and women are angry. They are angry. And scared as well. They're and terrified. Scared. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. because of the lack of action. But now what we need to do is see how we can turn that around. The statistic is that five and six men are not violent. But where are those five in six men? Where are we they? need to yeah, see them yeah. at the front of the march. True. It's great that on Saturday there's going to be a march by men in Pretoria. And I hope that men will turn out in huge numbers to say, hello, I am not one of those men. And I am going to hold any man who is abusive accountable. We need citizen action. One, we can only honor Karabo if we get out as citizens and we demand action, we demand accountability, we demand that our systems work for us. Imagine for a moment, if every eight hours a man were killed by his intimate partner, would there not be a state of emergency? Somehow a woman's life in, in our country is less valuable than that of a man. Unless, until we turn that around, we're not going to get the kind of solutions that we need. Why is it? Look, one thing about femicide, is that any death, any birth is reported. 
So femicide is reported. The police know these things. Why are only 30% of those cases lead to successful convictions when we have all the information at hand? Why is it that the maximum penalties are not being meted out in these cases? We as citizens need to ask those questions and hold our systems accountable because the simple fact is men are getting away with murder. Yeah, yeah. And it, it sounds like there's so much questions without answers. It sounds like it. But now, Babja, what happens? Uh, the, the minister and Colleen earlier on were saying that uh, it's a matter of us coming together as a nation, trying to fight uh, and, and, and you know, get a solution to this national crisis. But what do you think should happen as a point of departure as we leave this venue here? As a point of departure, we need to have a national strategy to deal with gender-based violence as a matter of agency. Okay. We need, as men as ourselves, to begin to talk to a boy child. We need to talk to ourselves as men and hold ourselves account uh, accountable. We cannot dismiss um, um, hashtags like men are trash. If some men are, are rebelling against it, it means it's making a necessary impact in society. Because it cannot be this day and age whereby I see someone, I still keep quiet. And yet I regard myself as a, as a, as a, as a real man in society. We need to speak up as men. We need also to know that every eight hours, a woman is being killed by intimate partner. We also need to sensitize our police, very much so. We also need to, to work with men. The church must pray for women. The church, even a single day, I heard yesterday they were talking um, um, at Regina Mode. Yeah. But what was lacking is the role that you know the church is doing right. in so far as the women uh, we, we pray for women. Okay. If we can do that, my sister, half the battle will be won. All right. And we need to go to text ranks, engage with them, talk to them. All right. Because so that they can get them as men. Talking right. to them in we, a positive way. We've run out of time, but he makes mention of an important issue, national strategy on violence. Is it something that uh, the government will look into? Well, I must say that the issue of national strategy, we have a, a, a strategy which deals with violence against women. It's paper. For me, I don't believe in papers. It's I deal, it has to be action orientated because those are committees, we form committees every day. That is why we have a problem. We've got to pull together and I want to call on South Africans that they must join hands with us as we on this path in fighting the schedule of violence in our country. Okay, Minister, we'll leave it at that. I know we have to let you go because you're off to Garabo's funeral. And uh, thank you so much for coming through. Colin, thank you. Babjab, thank you so much thank for coming through. through. All right, let's, let's quickly take it. Let's watch lady. Okay, all right. Let's, let's quickly let's take an ad break here on Morning Live. When we come back, there's still so much more to come. Live from uh, Baratexi Rank here in Soweto Station. <laughs>